Hey guys, wanted to tell you a little bit about this week's sponsor. Artsa is a quarterly subscription box that follows the footsteps of Jesus and the Bible while supporting the people of Israel. Each box contains nine products from local artisans in the Holy Land. It also includes information about different regions in Israel, recipes, and scriptures that bring the Bible to life. They deliver it right to your doorstep, and it is the perfect gift idea. You can save 25% on your annual subscription by visiting artsabox.com and using the code TBCTL25 at checkout. Again, that's TBCTL25 at artsabox.com. You're listening to Heart of the Father, a podcast from Pastor Eugene Weldon. For more information about our ministry and how you can get involved, text the code Kingdom Life to 94000. That's Kingdom Life to 94000. Welcome back to Heart of the Father podcast. My name is Court Weldon. As always, I'm here with my dad, Pastor Eugene Weldon. Uh, The topic of this week's conversation is going to be about the goodness of God. I just shared a message at Christian Missions about the goodness of God, and, and, and I believe that we've got to look at the goodness of God and look and see what the goodness of God is and, and what it represents and, and what it amounts to. And, and it's something that, that, you know, I go back a lot of years of study and looking at things, and, and, and there was a, a pastor that I, I read books of, of and listened to some of his teachings years ago, Kenneth Hagin, and he said that the, the glory of God is the manifested presence, the manifested power, and the manifested goodness of God. Well, Moses cried out in Exodus 33, and he, and he said, God, show me your glory. Well, God came up in, in, in Exodus 33, 19. He, uh, God said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And so God himself compared his goodness to his glory. Mm-hmm. And, I, and that's, I don't know the story, but that's probably where Pastor Hagen got the, the term of the glory of the Lord being mm-hmm. the manifested presence, power, and goodness of God. Right. Okay, then you go to Romans chapter 2, verse 4, and he tells us that it's the, uh, the goodness of God that leads a person to repentance, a man or woman to repentance. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so it's that goodness of God that brings that person. Right. And we know that without repentance, there is no reconciliation. And so there's for sure, even in the midst of that, having an understanding that it's God's goodness that draws you in. And it's the condemnation of the enemy that separates you from him. Exactly. Just like a a term conviction is used a lot of times, you know, in condemnation. And and, in Romans, he tells us there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Okay, I believe it's, it's my belief that when the Holy Spirit begins to move upon a person, and and if he's convicting them to his to the, of their sin, then it is drawing them to God. Right. Okay. When the enemy is is condemning a person, and the enemy is bringing condemnation, when they feel condemnation, well, what condemnation does is drive a person away from God. Right. It's it's encompassed with fear and terror in a lot yeah, of ways. Totally. Yeah. Totally. It, it, it when we're being condemned, we feel like God can't even accept us right. himself. Right. And so it's that goodness of God. And, and, and one of the things is I w- was studying and reading, you know, and, and in that, that uh, Exodus 33, 19, uh, when you study in the Hebrew and the Greek and you study in all those things, you'll find out that he, as he begins to, to talk about his goodness, uh, Strong describes it as uh, God says, my goodness speaks of the sense of the wonder of God, of his divine attributes of his essential worth and his majesty. Right. Many years ago, I did a teaching about we did not understand the majesty of God, the glory of God. We don't understand that. And and we've got to come to that full saving knowledge that it's about him. It ain't about us. Right, right. Okay, he created us to be a, a holy dwelling place of God in the spirit. He's building up a holy temple not made with hands. Well, that's me and you. Right. We don't attend church. We is the church. Yeah. That's what we've been t- preaching for 35 years of my life. And, <laughs> and, and that's something that, that is you get into the goodness of God and you think about the goodness of God. And, and as, as Romans talks about the, the, 
re, the goodness draws a person to repentance. Okay, and then then as you look at it and think about it as the glory of the Lord, Habakkuk 2.14 says that the earth will be filled with the knowledge yep. of the glory of the Lord mm. as the waters cover the sea. Well, that's a total covering. And so God's church is going to come to a day and a time that they are going to understand right. that total covering glory of God, that total goodness of God, because it's going to cover the earth. Well, how is it going to cover the earth? By you and I. Right. For us understanding that that message of the kingdom, that gospel, that message of the gospel of the kingdom mm -hmm. is about you and us, you and I being his sons and daughters. Right. And it's representing him as Jesus is. So are you and I in the world. We walk as he walked, talk as he talked. So we bring his goodness in everywhere that we're at. Right. We bring his manifested presence, his manifested powers, and manifested glory. So when I talk about the goodness of God, I've got to bring about that that it's the glory of God being presented. Okay, when you get down in Galatians and it it tells us the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, goodness. Yep. Okay, and so one of the attribute, attributes of that, of the fruit of the Spirit, and he doesn't say fruits, he says fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Yep. Okay, because he as is he love. is, so are we, yep. and he is love. And so yep. then the attributes come across in that in that joy, that peace, that patience, that gentleness, that Correct. goodness, that self-control. He mm -hmm. comes across in those things. And, and David in the Psalms wrote many times about the goodness of God. Just a few of them in Psalm 16, too. He said, oh, my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. David understood that he had nothing. It's just like our righteousness is, is filthy rags. It's his goodness. It's his love. It's his peace. All of the attributes are his, and he's given them to us. Right. His spirit lives within us, so we have all of those attributes of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. within us. And so that's how our, our, our goodness, our, our God's goodness goes throughout the world. Okay, in Psalms 31, 19, oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up on those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you in the presence of the sons of men. Mm -hmm. So God has laid his, his goodness upon us through his Holy Spirit. Right. Okay, and, and in Psalms 52, why do you boast in evil, almighty man? The goodness of God endures continually. Okay, so they go together just like with that tobacco. The goodness yep. of God is going to go throughout the earth. Right. And, and I want to emphasize as well in Habakkuk when you talk about the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory. And I think that's what a key part that's been missing in the church and in the world is the knowledge of who God is, the knowledge of his goodness. And we've talked about this in one of the previous podcasts. It's the truth you know that sets you free. Exactly. And so there has to be in a lot of ways an illumination, there's got to be some light bulbs going off around the world where people, they truly capture in their spirit that God is love and his goodness is what follows and surrounds you at all times. And, and it's really got to be a break from tradition, a break from rote church that says that God's up high and we're down low. There, there has to be a knowledge poured out. And we know that in scripture, it talks about at the end days that will be poured out. And so that's one of the things that for me, that knowledge word really stood out to me. And how does it come about? Okay, Absolutely. for me, several years ago, and that's that's why I use that, it's the truth that you know that makes you yep. free. Yep. Okay, years ago, God spoke to me, and I was crying. I God, show me your truth. Tell me your truth. Give me truth. I need truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very quietly and very plainly, he said, Eugene, truth is not the key to that scripture. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The key to that scripture is knowing. Knowing, yep. It's that knowledge, that knowing that you have. Yep. In the book of Proverbs, he says, pursue wisdom. Mm -hmm. per, and, it, and with your getting, get understanding. Yep. Okay, and so one of the revelations God gave me is to pray for the lucidity of his word to go forth. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's one of those big words that I don't use in my vocabulary. And so when God gives <laughs> me those words, I have to mm -hmm. look them up. Okay, lucidity means to receive directly and instantaneously. It's that, wow, the light bulb went off. Yeah, it's like a rhema word. Wow, there it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and that's the deal is we begin to pray for people for the lucidity of his word to go forth. Yep. 
And all of a sudden, it was like the, the, the rock wall was down and people were receiving. And so I believe that's something that everyone can pray is for the, that lucidity of, the, the lucidity of God's word, right. for them to receive that knowledge of the truth. Mm-hmm. Okay, because it's that knowledge of the truth that's going to make you free. Okay, and so a practical way the, to explain the goodness of God, okay, is I've had some dreams in my life. And when I had those dreams, God spoke to me in different ways. Okay, there's other times that God has spoken to me just in the still, small voice, that whisper. Mm-hmm. And, and it's always the Holy Spirit that speaks to us. Right. Okay, and one day y'all were young, and I took y'all to, to school and and as I was leaving the school one morning real early, and, and you were probably in junior high, and I was leaving from, from, from the school, for, uh, and, and all of a sudden I heard that still small voice, go to this man's house, go and see this man. And it was, there was an urgency on me. And so I knew the Holy Spirit was speaking, and so I had some time to run by there before I did other things I had going. I drove to that man's house, and I knocked on the door, and he and he. Walked up and he opened the door. I saw his truck in the front, so I knew he was there. And he said, who called you, Eugene? And I said, nobody called me. I said, God spoke to me to come and see you. I said, I don't know what's going on, but it was urgent for me to come. Right. Well, the young man got pretty emotional, and he said that he had been in an accident early that morning leaving a drilling rig, mm. and he had hit a car, and and the lady in the car, a person in the car, and, and they they died. He tried to get them out, and he couldn't get them out. and And so it was a traumatic experience for a young man. Right. You know, he was young. I don't know how old he was, 20-something, 30 maybe. And he had children of his own. And he was uh, grew up like I did, grew up in the oil field, grew up tough and and all those things. And, And just me showing up showed him the goodness of the Lord. Right. He showed that. That even though God is way up there, as he had been taught, yep. wow, God spoke to this man down here. Mm-hmm. And, and I shared with him. I prayed with him. I walked him through all of the trauma of it. I walked him through all of, uh, of the things that, that came through the future of it. Right. And after it was said and done, he wanted what I had, and he accepted Jesus. Mm-hmm. Okay, it was the goodness of God. Okay, it wasn't a condemnation of, of look what you've done. And no. It was just the love. Okay, so God's manifested presence, his manifested power, and his manifested goodness was, was expressed there in that young man. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then uh, one night I had a dream. I spoke about how God speaks periodically in dreams. And I had a dream, and, and a friend of mine wanted to go on the rodeo circuit and fill his permit and and so I told him I'd go out with him, and, and we were just going to some Texas rodeos. And we pull up this rodeo one night, and, and we're up in the morning in the slack. And he was telling me about this young up-and-newcomer, a, a 19-year-old young man that could rope and bulldog, and he was just a fabulous athlete. And he said, man, this guy's going to be something. And so I started looking around. He said that that young man was entered there. And I got to watch the young man as he roped and as he did his, carried his, himself to – because he was an up and comer. Well, for three nights in a row before we got to that rodeo, I had a dream. And the first night, I was driving down the highway in my pickup truck. Mm. As I'm driving down the highway, there was a car in front of me, and all of a sudden, the car lost control. It started sliding all over the highway, came off of the highway, and was about to hit a tree. And I turned loose of my steering wheel with one hand, and I said, Lord Jesus, save them. The car stopped before it hit the tree. I jumped out and I ran up there and I jerked the door open and it was a teenage girl. And I just held her and I prayed for her and she was okay. Well, then the next night I have another dream. I'm driving down the highway again in my truck. And as I'm driving down, all of a sudden there was a a car in front of me pulling a little miniature travel trailer. And all of a sudden the trailer Loses the car, loses control, and the trailer's whipping all over the highway, about to turn over the car and the trailer. I turn loose the steering wheel. And I just hold my hand up and I say, "Lord Jesus, save them." Mm-hmm. As I as I they get control and off the side of the road and stop, and as I ease up, there three little children jump out of the car. I mean, out of the travel trailer. They were in the trailer itself, and so they jumped out of that trailer, and mom and dad ran to them, and and they were all all right. 
Okay, then the next night I had another dream. And I'm going, driving over a bridge, and the exact same thing. I see a boat and and an accident in a boat, and I just say, Lord Jesus, save them. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I saw that everybody was all right as as I stopped. Okay, three nights in a row I had those dreams. Then I show up to this rodeo. Okay, well, that morning that we are in the slack bulldogging, I am on my bulldogging horse, mm-hmm. and I'm the next bulldogger. Well, this young boy is is hazing for some, or he's up before me. I don't remember if he was bulldogging or hazing, but he was up before me. And so I'm actually watching him as he's riding his horse. The steer cuts under his horse, flips him and the horse. Wow. And as it flips the horse, it is coming down right on top of me. I'm sitting there on my horse holding my reins, and I just throw my hand up and holler, Lord Jesus, save him. Just like I did three nights in a row in that dream. Mm-hmm. I did it without react, with, without thinking. thinking. Sure, It was just natural to do it because I'd done it three nights in a row in a dream. Mm-hmm. Well, that young, I ran out there, and everybody else ran out there. A young man got up like nothing happened. The wow. horse missed him some way. And he, well, how some way? God sent his angels to hold him and protect him. Right. Well, I, I just watched that young man on the NFR this past year. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a great athlete. That young man doesn't even know this story. Yeah. He has no clue. Okay, I'll give you another dream. One night I had a dream about a friend that I used to rodeo with. I haven't seen him in 25 years. I haven't spoken to him. Well, I had a dream, and in the dream I saw a casket. And he was kneeling at the foot of that casket. And I saw him back in the day when we were rode down. And so I knew it was him. And I woke up and I said, Lord Jesus, you're telling me that someone he loves is in danger of dying. Mm-hmm. So I began to pray for him. I began to pray for his wife, his children. I have no idea what he has. I ain't seen him in 25 years. Sure. I don't know if he has children or not. Well, I prayed for him for a couple of weeks because I didn't know what was going on. I called a mutual friend and I said, Hey, you know what's going on? Our friend, I, I had a dream about him and you know, and I've been praying and, and he said, no, but I'll call him. And he called me back and said, man, the guy's good. I called the, the guy, he gave me his number and I called him and I said, Hey, I didn't thought about, I hadn't seen you in a long time. I was thinking about you and praying for you. I just want to check if he was all right. And he said, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I'm good. My daughter-in-law called me a week or so later. And she said, hey, she knows nothing about the dream. She knows nothing about me calling him. And she said, hey, I know that you were friends with this man. and His son was in a bad car wreck. Mm. And he said, he's alive today and he shouldn't be alive. She said it was an unbelievable wreck. And she she sent me the picture of the the vehicle. And it was flat. But he lived through it. And after I... She told me, I said, well, I had this dream, and I told her the story, and she said, oh, my gosh, he's alive because you were praying. Mm. And she sent me a picture, and sure enough, it looked really bad. But the young man is alive today. Right. Okay, they don't know anything about that. Yep. And so that's the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. And that's not just something for Eugene. That's for every person that's listening. If you will allow the Holy Spirit of God to move within you and through you, then that manifested glory of God, that glory of God, the manifested presence, the manifested power, and the manifested goodness will be exemplified in and through you. Right. Yeah, and it reminds me of Psalms 23, 6, that says, Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. Yeah, it's the the 23rd Psalm that we all quote. Yeah, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But I don't think people recognize it as encompassing his goodness and encompassing his love in and through how they pray in and through how they interact with other people. It's, it's got to be something that we take on as a mantle that our job is to represent God's goodness, but we first have to receive it for ourselves and understand that it is for us to get. It's his and it's in us. Yep. The biggest thing I get from people is why me? Yeah. Well, why not you? Right. <laughs> Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. Mm-hmm. You know, Jesus learned obedience in the wilderness. Right. And he went through some tough things. He endured all the shame and all of the things that went on for, for you and I. Mm-hmm. And so 
when we're going through things, if we will look for the goodness of God in and through it. Okay, I had three dreams. Mm -hmm. There was three little children that came out of that car in that wreck. Okay, and so I look at the number three, and and, and when you look at the, the, the number three, it means perfect completion. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so was I praying for people in those dreams? Yeah, could be. Yeah. But the third, uh, the the three dreams led me to be sitting on a horse in an arena and say, Lord Jesus, save him. Right. And so for me, that was the perfect completion of those three dreams put together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, on March the 21st of, of 2022, a Category 3 tornado mm -hmm. hit Jacksboro, Texas. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Category 3 tornado destroyed 80 houses right. in Jacksboro. Mm -hmm. Eight means new beginnings. Mm -hmm. Ten means God's perfect order. Mm -hmm. And so God tells me that God is giving Jacksboro a chance for a new beginning, new beginning. to put things in perfect order. Amen. I've stood on the courthouses. I've walked around them. I've stood on mm -hmm. the courthouse. I've walked around the schools. And, I, and I've declared and decreed yes. and proclaimed and screamed and hollered and yes. that Jacksboro is the Lord's. Yes. And, and I've declared that. So I believe that God is, if I look in that and I see, okay, the tornado hit our elementary school, mm -hmm. destroyed the gymnasium there. There was 500 students in there, probably another 50 teachers and workers. Right. Not a soul was harmed. Parents were lined up to pick their children up at three in the afternoon. No one was harmed. It went across the highway to our high school, hit the gymnasium there. There's another 280 children and teenagers and, yeah. and 100 teachers or whatever they've got over there. And not a soul was harmed. Right. That, to me, is the manifested glory of God. Yes. Yeah, because it could have very easily been devastation of life totally mm -hmm. it could you, we could have lost 500 students in elementary with yep. all of the workers the teachers yep. it could have hit the high school the same way and, and killed another 300 we yep. could have had a thousand or more yep Easily. in a category three tornado going mm -hmm. through housing additions yeah and in a town of 4,500 people town of four, that would have been devastating yep absolutely so people got to step back and look at the glory of God. Right. Okay, I look at that that uh, just, uh, category three tornado. And as I look at that, you think about the things that have taken place. Mm -hmm. On the th third day, God created the, the world. Mm -hmm. On the third day, uh, Abraham went to the place and saw the place that God told him to, act, uh, to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. and, and Isaac said, where's the sacrificial lamb? And Abraham's got said God will provide. Yep, yep. God will provide. Well, then you look at, at at the third day, God came down on Mount Sinai and spoke to the people. You look at 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 the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. On the third hour, Jesus was crucified. On the uh, there was three crosses. Yep. Okay, there was three hours of darkness. There was three words that Jesus spoke. It is finished. <laughs> the final words that Jesus spoke. Okay, you look at all of those things, then we've got to think about what's going on round about us. Mm -hmm. Peter denied Jesus three times, and Jesus restored him three times. Mm -hmm. Peter, do you love me? So if I'm going to talk about the goodness of God, I'm going to look around and see where God is at in the storm. Absolutely. Okay, God is everywhere, and God is all-encompassing. God knows all, sees all, mm -hmm. is everywhere. Okay? Storms are inevitable. Yes. And storms are going to come in our lives. But we have to be willing to see the goodness of God in and through those storms. Yeah, we have to make that choice because it's very easy to get bitter and upset and angry and frustrated at God in the midst of something like this. Like, well, we want to blame God on it all. Absolutely. God, why did God do this? I'm not saying God did this. Mm-hmm. No, but what he will do in the midst of it will bring about his glory. His and manifested that is, presence, yes. his manifested power, and his manifested glory. I can tell you testimony after testimony. There was a, 
a lady sitting in a double wide mobile home in between her toilet and her, and her bathtub mm-hmm. and the tornado hit right behind her house, destroyed a travel trailer, wiped it off the face of the earth. Uh-huh. And the lady that was in it, her husband pulled up and got her out of it five minutes before. Right. As they were driving back to town, the, t- the trailer was demolished. Yep. The lady in the trailer house across the road, sitting in there, mm-hmm. she told me God was sitting on top of my roof because it didn't touch my, my house. It jumped her house. And she was on top of the and roof. She and was, she was in between the bathtub and the, wow. the toilet. Wow. And it didn't touch it. But it, it, it was 50, not even 50 yards away yep. from that travel trailer. Right. Well, another 50 yards in front of her house was a metal barn that had just been built. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was probably a, a 40 by 40 metal barn. Right. That barn was gone. It mm-hmm. was totally wiped out. Mm-hmm. Behind her, another probably 100 yards behind her was a double wide. It was totally right. wiped out. And there was a dog in there, a family dog. It was not even harmed. Wow. I could tell you a story of a young man that went in the house to go to bed because he had been working all night. And his mother called him and said, don't go to bed. There's a storm. And he said, oh, mom, it ain't nothing. And he walked outside and he said, oh, my God, mom. And he ran and he dove into the closet. Mm-hmm. The whole house is destroyed except for that closet. Mm. He said he felt arms holding him. Wow. wow. I can tell you story after story that took place in this little old community. Yep. For me, that's the goodness of God. Absolutely. That's his manifested presence, his manifested power, and his manifested glory. Okay, so I'm going to look at for God in the midst of these yep, storms. Absolutely. I'm going to look for his goodness because his goodness is never ending. His never goodness ending, right. is eternal. Absolutely. And I think we, I know we haven't addressed this formally either, but because the church itself, the facilities that we have were hit. But we, that ain't the church. We no, the church. We, we, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes. But in the midst of it, there is so much good that we believe and are excited that it's going to come in the midst of this rebuilding phase for us. And and I just want you to share a little bit on that and give people encouragement because we know that our, our family that listens to this and, and is a part, we want them to catch that vision too and really be excited because it, something like this, I think in the natural, in the flesh, people want to just throw their hands up and quit. But that is not at all what we're doing. No, it's not where we're at. And and my personality, there ain't no quit in me. No. And But that building, it's just a sheep shed. It's a nice place to get out of the weather. Mm-hmm. We don't attend church. We is the church. We're, we're, it, it's always about the people. Yes. And we've made it about buildings. We've mm-hmm. made it a, about programs. We've made it about personalities, you know, and, and, and all of those things is what we've made church. Right. God is giving the church in the United States a wake up call. Mm-hmm. Okay. The night that the tornado hit at three o'clock that it hit in Jacksboro mm-hmm. that night, 18 tornadoes hit the state of Texas. Wow. Okay. If you look wow. at the number 18 and, and, and you see what the number 18 means, the number 18, uh, speaks of redemption. It speaks of everlasting life. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it, yeah. 18 means life in Hebrew. It means life. Mm-hmm. Okay. Eternal life. Yep. Okay. God has given us eternal life in the negative form of, of 18 means the sin of the flesh. Mm-hmm. Okay. We've let the flesh rule long enough in the church of the living God. Right. Okay. And so we've got to see that God is giving us a new beginning. He's going to put his church in perfect order. Mm -hmm. He's going to restore his perfect government. Right. All those things are going to be restored. Just a few months ago, mom and I were praying and I'm in a place that everything is his. I am here for him, whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. And as I'm praying, I said, father, if you're through with Christian missions in Jacksboro, Texas, Mm -hmm. if you have something else that you want say and I to do, it's yours. You do what you want to with it. Mm. If you want to blow that structure off the face of the earth, blow it off. Right. You do what you want to with it. I'll do anything and everything you want me to do. Mm. And then I had a deacon's meeting before 
I left Jacksboro. Yep. I was on my way to Houston, Texas on March the 21st. Mm -hmm. I was an hour or so out of Houston when I got the first telephone call. Mm -hmm. And the first telephone call I got was a man that was in the edge of the tornado. And he hollered, Eugene, please pray. I'm in a tornado. And I started praying. And he said, oh, my God, Christian Missions just blew away. It's gone. <laughs> And I said, it's gone. What do you mean it's gone? <laughs> yeah. And he said, it just blew by. I see it going by. <laughs> well, all the debris and everything blowing away. He thought that was our building blowing right, by. Right. Okay, our building did receive damage. Yep. Okay, but it did not destroy the whole thing. Right. But on the Friday before I left on Monday, I called the deacons into a special meeting, and I said, we need some things taken care of. Correct. We need to take care of some stuff on our facility that it, it needs to be repaired. Mm -hmm. And I gave them a list of everything need to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. And I said, we've got to replace some air conditioning. We've got to do some things. There's just one air conditioner over here that we got to replace <laughs> it. Mm -hmm. Well, they still hadn't found that air conditioner. Right, it's gone. <laughs> it blew it away. Okay. And, yeah. And, and so there's things that I gave them to do. Yes. Well, the storm damaged all the things that I told them to repair. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so now it's got to be repaired. Right. Okay. And so God is going to do a rebuild yep. in that physical building mm -hmm. and, and he's going to make it better than it was before. Right. We've had plans of, of opening it up for a, a public, for people to use it for a, whatever, a convention mm -hmm. center uh, mm -hmm. for any type of uh, things they need to do there, yep. a multiple use facility. It's a beautiful facility, but that ain't the church. Right. We are. We are. And I, I will not claim that that building is holy. Nope. It's not holy. It's just a building to get out of the weather. It's something that we can use to bring about his goodness and bring about his glory to people, That's to it. the nations. And That's it's such it's a for. beautiful facility. Yep. And Jacksboro doesn't have something that, that everybody can use for right. big events. You know, and so it's a place they can use for big events. Mm -hmm. and, and we were going to do some remodeling, redecorating, and all those things. Well, guess what? <laughs> we get a chance for a new beginning. Right. Okay. And, and in and through all of this, you've got to look at God's goodness in it. Mm -hmm. You've got to see what he's doing and, and and what he wants to do in and through it. Right. Okay. And so don't be hollering out, why me? Why, God, did you do this? Yep. Yep. Why did they get hit and I didn't or vice versa, all the, all the above that could Read your Bible. Right. The thief came only to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. Jesus came to give us abundant, abundant life. life. Yep. Okay. The number 18 means abundant life. Mm. The enemy is trying to kill, steal, and destroy that abundant life right. through 18 tornadoes in Texas mm -hmm. on March the 21st, 2022. Right. But God manifested his goodness. Mm -hmm. He showed his glory. Mm -hmm. Just like when Moses said, God, show me a glory. Yep. God said, okay, Moses, I'm going to allow. Yep. I'm going to allow all my goodness, all yep. my goodness all to walk by you. All of it. All of it. And I heard a, a preacher tell us at the beginning of this year, if we wanted to receive all God had for us. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, that is exactly the word that the Lord gave you for this year. That's the word. And the word with it was God is about to shake everything that can, can be, be shaken. shaken. Mm -hmm. The refiner's fire is here. The refiner's fire is to reveal things hidden. Right. I was on my way to Houston, Texas mm -hmm. because I couldn't breathe. Right. Three and a half years ago, I had a triple bypass. They told me they were going to do a quadruple. Mm -hmm. They did three, and I said, why not the fourth? And he said, oh, I thought it was all right. Yeah. A year later, I still couldn't breathe. Changed doctors because they said there was nothing wrong with me. Another doctor looked and said, your main artery is 99% blocked on top. Mm -hmm. And it's the one the man was going to bypass. I don't know if his wife called him. I don't know <laughs> if I was having trouble. Right. I don't know if he got tired, but he didn't do the fourth one mm -hmm. for some reason. Well, because the enemy comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. But Jesus came to give life and give it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. That's the goodness of God. Okay, they put a stand in. We fast forward another year. I was still struggling breathing. I went in the hospital for five days running tests every day. Yep. 
one minute I'd have oxygen in my blood, the next minute I wouldn't, and they couldn't find out why. Mm. So it kept progressing. Yep. And so we found another doctor in Houston, mm -hmm. and I went to him, and it took him two hours to find it in a procedure he said it would take an hour. But when he found it, he said it was hidden. Yep. The stent that was put in a year ago was an, two millimeters too short. Wow. The refiner's fire is to reveal those things hidden within our lives. And, that and was it, hidden to kill me. It was. And, and if you think about millimeters, that's minute. That's a little bitty. That ain't very big. Okay. And so when they found it and they put it in, and then all of a sudden now I can breathe. Hmm. All of a sudden, man, I'm, I'm wanting to go back to Bulldog. Yeah, you, I feel you, so just, you just got a second wind. Oh, wow. And I, I'm, <laughs> I can't wait to get to working out and, and get back on my horse. And, right. Now, your mom don't think that way, but that's the way my brain works. Yes, yeah. Joshua and Caleb, when they entered the promised land, they was 80 years old and said, give me that mountain, give right. me the giants. Mm -hmm. You promised it. I want it. Yep. Okay, that's the way that I feel the goodness of God. Yep, yep. Three yep. years ago, I told God, if you're done with me, if I've completed it, if all my sons, biological and all my spiritual sons, if they need me to go away, and, and I'm okay with that, God. But it's been a three and a year, half year of progress. That God is showing me his goodness that he's not done with me. Yep. He's showing me that he's got more to do. Amen. Okay, well, for me, mm -hmm. I, I'm willing. Yes. God yes. send me. Because when I go, I'm going to go with your glory. Mm -hmm. Just like the waters cover the sea. God's glory will cover this earth. Yep. His manifested presence, his manifested power, and his manifested goodness, mm -hmm. it will cover this earth Amen. because that's what his word says. Amen. And Father, we just thank you for that. We thank you for that goodness. We thank you for your mercy and, and your ever-loving kindness, Father. But we just rejoice in the midst of storms, and we just thank you for everybody listening that they are able to receive just the that, lucidity, the of, the lucidity word. of the word, but they're able to receive that manifestation of your glory and your goodness, Father. And so, Father, I just thank you for those that are listening, that you just wrap your arms around them and your Holy Spirit just goes before them and, and reveals things, Father, of, of how you've always been faithful and you've always been good in their life, Father. And so I, I thank you that you continue to do that and you continue to manifest your presence before us and we just rejoice in all that's to come in our community, Father, but all that's to come for those who are in your kingdom, Father, who are serving you diligently and who love you, Father, because your word says that you never abandon us. And so we just rejoice in that, and we just thank you, Father, for your goodness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast. If you'd like to support our ministry financially and help us keep making content just like this, text the code Kingdom Life to 94000. That's Kingdom Life to 94000.